Hey everybody, how you doing? I am starting on the Reichstag painting vlog and as you can see I've already done the base coat and the priming. So for the base coat I use this Rust-Oleum camouflage color. Um, it's not quite khaki, it's not quite beige, but it, it actually works out very well for the intended purpose that I had it for. Um, I was going to use the Zandri Dust by Games Workshop. 17 bucks a bottle, basically 18 bucks a bottle. $3.49 at Walmart and yeah save yourself some money if you're going for this color scheme which this is the color scheme I'm going for I'm also going to use this for my uh, Sector Imperialis terrain that came with the Kill Team box so <clears throat> excuse me like I said the base coating is done as far as the exterior goes and somewhat for the interior I did fix the warping that was over here that I showed in my review video and I did have a user, a YouTube user, Ryan Scott, who asked a very good question, which I did not think of at the time when I was doing the review. So thank you, Ryan, for pointing this out. I'm going to go ahead and take answer your question right now. His question was, if I could show these with a Flames of War small and medium base. So here's the small, here's the medium. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you're looking at it from the front angle, this is the front of the building. So, you know, it's pretty decent. They're not obviously not going to be able to fit through the, uh, ooh, I have no fingernails, fit through the front door for obvious reasons. But I think he more wanted to know about <clears throat> when it comes to the interior, which my friend John, whom I got these bases from, uh, told me that there is rules for fighting door to door, room to room. So, that being the case, Let's look at the top story first. Um, you know, we'll move this out of the way. It's a massive, massive, massive thing. So when you're looking at from here, the small base very easily fits through there. I mean, that, there's no doubt. And they're going to fit in the rooms. When it comes to the doors, not so much. Uh, with this door here, you're going to have to go through sideways. So, you know. And then obviously with this door you're not going to be able to go through but it does fit this sensor hallway very well the medium base I need to change this camera angle there we go that'll be better <clears throat> excuse me so the medium base obviously it doesn't go through any of the doors you mean on the second level and then when you're trying to go through the center hallway negative it's not going to fit through unless you go like this and you go through sideways so it's just going to be a matter of you and your opponent agreeing that, you know, they're facing forwards, but for the intent of the game, you know, you're going to have to go like this or use a proxy. Now, this is just the second floor. Um, the first floor, quote unquote, I'll bring that out. And I did fix that warping issue, like I said. Um, same thing. Not going to fit through the doorways. Unless you go some of the larger ones, you go sideways, you can fit your small infantry group through. And then, of course, it fits very well there as far as the small template goes. The medium one does not fit either. It's just a tiny bit short. So you'd have a choice of either sanding down the sides of the hallway on this first floor. Or, again, you're going to have to go sideways. But they do fit in there. Now, this is the medium base in this particular room. It's rather large, so yeah, it's not. I don't know if that'd be ideal. I don't know the rules for Flames of War, to be honest with you. It's been a long time since I've played, since version 1. Obviously, here in the center, plenty of room. Plenty of room up here. Again, same thing over here, same thing over there. So, yeah, Ryan, I hope that answers your question. You now, it's just going to be between you and your opponent. Um, like I mentioned before, I wanted to do a checkered pattern on this floor. I'm not painting it. Uh, that would take forever, so I'm using one of these micro pens. Just to do a square by square. This is going to take me quite a while. Um, I may honestly just give up on it because there are so many of these squares. Um, I just don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to do this in any feasible amount of time for the video to get everything finished in time, in my plan time. But, who knows, it's something I could work on later. I don't know. <clears throat> so, that's that part 
of this portion of it. So for this, the next step, what I'm going to do is use some burnt umber for all this damage right here, all this rubble. I'll it here, get that done, and then I'll show you the next step. All right, so stage two was done. Burnt umber was airbrushed on all over here. Um, did it on the roof as well. Not really sure why I went ahead and did it on there. Um, just maybe to set it off a bit, just on the little ruin piles and over there. And inside as well, even though this part isn't done um, from the top, it kind of, I wish I could get the lighting in. There we go. Give like it's kind of burnt out. Like there was a fire at one point. There will be some black put on there, dry brushed. Um, so that's that. But yeah, the main part is the building. See where there's little blast marks right here. And here. Just little areas where I got some effect to go in there. It'll all be touched up here shortly. This is the back side, of course. Let me see. All that there. And on this side here as well. Oops. And then I went ahead, and while this was drying, I did each of these individually with a Sharpie. With this sharpie to be exact this it's a very tedious process um just to give you a good idea of how much time it took on um, this corner right here this was about 15 minutes for this um so yeah went all the way ahead i decided not to go ahead and do the rooms because this is just taking way too long um this spot right here this is actual it's supposed to be debris like dust and uh, drywall, same thing here. That's why all these areas are kind of, kind of just there. <clears throat> but they're gonna get hit with some um, pigment powder. Um, the best thing for me to suggest, if you pick this up and you want to do a checker pattern as well, make sure you have plenty of time. And just remember, you're gonna have to start. Choose a good starting point because once you start. You're pretty locked into the pattern now. I I did mess up right here. You see this one in the middle? I just got to do a quick thing of white on this one little square, and that'll fix that. But maybe, you know, start right here on this portion. Start your checker pattern. Because once you start laying out this area, or any area, like I said, I started over here. You have to do your best guess. I just assumed that this was going to be... This was like a wall, so that way I could just jump over here and start. Or even start over here. Because then you can figure out, okay, this is going to go here. Boom, 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 boom. And work your way around all these debris fields. Okay, so that's done. Not quite done. I haven't decided if I want to paint these walls red or leave them white and put up some awesome decals I got from Dave's Decals of graffiti. That'll, that would look really cool in here. At least I think they will look really cool. So the next step, I'm not going to bother you showing it, but I'm going to use a shop tea bone to dry brush on the highlights there, and then I'm going to follow it with an Agrax Earthshade. Now, if you're saying, hey, that looks just like something Gavin did on Warhammer Community, it's because it is, but it works perfectly for this building for my intent. So I'm going to do this all over the exterior, and I'm not going to touch the roof as of yet because, like I said, I'm going to do some painting up here. I uh, haven't decided on what colors yet, and I am going to do some painting up here on these domes because I want to give it that nice burnt or oxidized patina. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, dry brushing is done, and I'm going to go ahead and post this portion of the paint log up here in just a few minutes. So, like I said, for the stones, I was using the, I can't even read it, Ushabti Bone for all this on the base. But this color was just a little too close to the base color. So I did end up using uh, Hexus Pale Sun to do some of the highlighting on here. I haven't done the Agrax Earthshade as of yet. Let's go ahead and take a look real quick. Okay, so it's a really subtle, really subtle blending of the colors. Um, you see in some spots I got a little bit too much on there. 
that's okay. The Agrax Earthshade will take it off, but it highlighted it really well. It really complemented it very well. Um, this did take a while to do. I mean, quite honestly, it took a lot longer than what I was expecting. Um, I have to hit like these little areas right here just to dull it down a bit, because this, excuse me, this Hexos Pale Sun, um, it actually blends in really well with this khaki color and the burnt umber. Um, you can see it a little better over here, where it looks a little bit more faded. Yeah, that compared to that. So yeah, I got to do this part here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's ending up looking really nice. Uh, so far, three colors. That's all I've gotten on there. Then the Agrax Earthshade. And we're good to go. Um, as far as the windows for this for this color painting guide thing that I'm doing, whatever you want to call it, I don't think I'm going to do the windows, to be honest with you. Um, it, it's really tedious. I'm just not sure if I want to do that because I did plan to have this done in time for Monday. But who knows? I don't know. But we'll go ahead and see. And then there's a lot of windows here that are broken. As you can see, so that that is a little bit time consuming. I don't know. Let me know what you think. If you think I should go ahead and do it, um, the more comments I get, probably I'll do it. I mean, to be honest with you, because you're looking at doing this, this, then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, yeah, like 15 windows to do. That's the back side. So yeah, that could take a little little bit of time, having to do the uh, aluminum inside the window. Get the aluminum there and then wait for that to dry. And then doing the uh, waystone blue on top of it. Not sure. Might be something I do. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, hopefully this compilation video works out. And then we'll have part two, which will cover the Agrax Earthshade portion, uh, the roof, and possibly level one or level two. All right, y'all. Take it easy. Have a good one.